Out of all the utopian and dystopian novels that we've read over the course of the semester, there are three main elements that really stand out to me in creating the perfect utopia. The first and probably most important element would be choice. The people of the utopia have to want to be there. Dystopian societies have a common theme of forcing people to live in conditions that they don't approve of, whereas utopian societies don't require people to. Take for example Winston in 1984. He hated the society that he lived in and was powerless to make any change happen. You can't make someone happy if they don't want to be. Also, without choice, you're stripping people of a basic human right. The utopia I envision may not be ideal for some individuals, and that is okay. If one is upset with the way the utopia operates, they can leave. Like how some people left Omelas when they couldn't bear the truth that happiness that they felt was at the expense of a random child. Even in the Bible, God allowed Eve to have the choice to eat the forbidden fruit or not. The next element that seems key to maintaining a perfect utopia is everyone has to have a common culture. The main elements of creating a common culture involve having the same language, religion, norms, organization, government, economic systems, etc. Societies don't function properly when there is too much diversity. For example, America has struggled for years because there are too many different cultures that are all expected to be on the same page. Creating a common culture is something that has reoccurred several times throughout world history. The pilgrims left England because they couldn't have religious freedom, Nazis wanted to eliminate the Jews, America has a fear of Muslims, and the list continues. People are more willing to cooperate and communicate when another individual is the same as they are. The last element to creating a perfect utopia would be that everyone needs to have a common vulnerability. Whether it is blindness, such as in the country of the blind, or losing a limb, everyone has to have the same handicap. It creates a sense of community since everyone will have to rely on one another in order to get by. It also takes away the ability to advance too far ahead of another individual and create jealousy because everyone has the same disability. Once you get past what elements should be a part of the society, you have to begin to ask, how will this work? Creating this society shouldn't be all too difficult. To begin things off, there would need to be a creation of a common culture. Everyone will speak the same language, English. Religion will be eliminated because disparities in beliefs have caused problems in the real world, and religion has been used all too often throughout history as a means of power and control. As far as societal norms go, this utopia would be heteronormative for the sake of reproduction, but does not frown upon other sexualities. There are also no specific gender roles, and anyone can do anything within the community. There is also no specific style of dressing. Everyone will have accessibility to the same clothes from the same brand. The government will be a true democracy where people will make all the decisions. This works both legislative and judicially. The society works as a hive mind. This allows everyone to be peers, giving no individual power over another, and encourages the community involvement in all affairs. As far as the economy is concerned, everyone is given a home free of charge and a job. Every job will have equal pay so that no one will feel pressured into choosing a specific career path, and hierarchies in the workplace also don't exist, as everyone will help one another excel at their job. Working as a community will be an important value as everyone has to help one another and can depend on someone else to help them too. The next and probably the most difficult element to incorporate into the utopia would be to decide which vulnerability everyone should have. Blindness feels like a strong candidate, but there are other possibilities. Losing a limb would not be enough because as technology progresses, people would just recreate the limb that they lost, so people would need to lose something that can't really be replaced. The decision that I lean towards the most would be that everyone loses their ears at birth. It sounds kind of crazy, but as babies, everyone will have their ears removed surgically, causing everyone to be mostly deaf, and this tradition will carry on until babies begin to be born without ears. Seen as inhumane at first, eventually the removal of ears will become tradition. Language will remain English because everyone will learn how to read lips and use other body language so that they can fully grasp the feelings of another individual. People who come to the society to live in with the ability to hear do not have to have their ears removed, but are required to wear special noise canceling headphones, sort of like in uh, Harrison Bergeron. But their headphones can never come off and their children will have to have their ears removed if they have any. The last step in creating this utopia, which requires the least amount of effort, would be to give citizens choice before they want to come to and even while they live in the society. Anyone who doesn't want to live in this utopia can leave. People will be informed of how the society is structured and can choose whether or not they want to accept the terms before they come. 
People can choose where they want to work and they can choose where they want to live, where, or even what they want to agree with. In a utopian society, it isn't right to make people feel like they are forced into doing things. In a way, it creates a paradox because people are required to have their ears removed or wear special headphones, but everyone is told the consequences of living in the society before they arrive, which points back to them choosing whether or not they want to stay.